Alright, so in my first video I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the gluteal region and in my second video I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the posterior compartment of the thigh and the popliteal fossa. So just starting on the left side of my model, um, starting with gluteus maximus, the most superficial and largest of the muscles in the gluteal region. Um, so it arises from multiple places. It arises from the posterior surface of the ilium. So here's the ilium. Um, the lateral aspect of the sacrum, the sacrum, and from the sacrotuberous ligament, which is mostly obscured by the gluteus maximus. But here um, you can see it on this side, and here I am highlighting on the left side. Now, it attaches kind of a couple places. It attaches to the gluteal tuberosity of the femur, um, and also it sends off tendons to join the tensor fascia lata, um, sends off tendons to it in order to join the iliotibial tract, which then in turn attaches to the lateral condyle, or uh, lateral tibial condyle. So if we just follow um, this inferiorly, and I kind of show you the anterior portion of the model, you can see that it attaches to the tibia and the lateral um, tibial condyle. So the gluteus maximus joins the um, iliotibial tract. And just a point on the tensor fascia latae, um, it's part of the anterior compartment of muscles, but it gets supplied from the superior gluteal nerve um, instead of the femoral nerve, like the rest of the anterior compartment. Um, so that's kind of one exception to remember, as well as its function is to stabilize the knee in extension. So I'm going to remove the um, gluteus maximus and the um, tensor fascia. So here goes gluteus maximus, taking that away, and that reveals to us gluteus medius. So gluteus medius arises from the anterior portion of the ilium, or the iliac crest, so here we have it. Um, and it attaches to the greater trochanter of the femur right here. So just rotating anteriorly, greater trochanter of the femur is right here, and here is gluteus medius. Um, like gluteus minimus, it abducts, abducts, um, and extends the hip. So they both abduct and extend the hip, and I'm going to remove gluteus medius, because deep to that is gluteus minimus. Now, gluteus minimus originates from the anterior gluteal line, so it's not well shown in my model here, but just zooming in, um, if you look at Gray's anatomy or something like that, some really detailed anatomy, across this portion of the ilium, which I'm outlining with my um, mouse pointer, you would have the anterior gluteal line, which is kind of a hardened or a rough ridge that the gluteus minimus attaches to. And then, just like gluteus medius, it inserts on the greater trochanter of the femur. Okay, so just zooming out here, and now turning towards the right-hand side of my model, I want to talk a bit about pur piriformes, which is a lateral rotator of the thigh, but I'll talk about that. Um, I want to talk about its origin, and I also want to talk about how it's really good for landmarking things. So starting with its origin, basically piriformes originates from the sacrum and travels through the greater sciatic foramen and attaches to the greater trochanter of the femur over here. Um, for those of you who missed my last video, just to really quickly recover the greater sciatic foramen, I'm going to look at the left-hand side of my model. Here's piriformes. I'm removing it. Basically, we have the greater sciatic notch right here. The sacrospinous ligament is the inferior boundary, and then the sacrum is going to be the medial boundary. So, and this all forms the greater sciatic foramen. So piriformes travels through the greater sciatic foramen, but so does a whole bunch of other stuff, and piriformes helps define or landmark those items. So basically starting superior to piriformes, we have the superior gluteal artery and the superior gluteal nerve. Now the superior gluteal nerve innervates gluteus minimus and gluteus medius. And then we have piriformes, and then below that we have the pretty easy inferior gluteal nerve, which I've faded here, and I'm going to unfade. The inferior gluteal nerve innervates gluteus maximus. So inferior to the piriformes, these all travel through the greater sciatic foramen and in innervates gluteus maximus. So I'm going to hide that. And then lateral or medial to the um, sciatic nerve is the inferior gluteal artery, which provides a lot of blood supply to gluteus maximus as well. Also going to hide that. Also medial to the greater sciatic nerve, 
or sorry, to the sciatic nerve, um, is the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and I just included that because it was included in the dissector. I'm not sure if you're going to find it. I guess we'll see. Um, and I'm going to hide that as well. And then, of course, the sciatic nerve. And I guess just a note on the sciatic nerve um, is that, as we discussed in class, the sciatic nerve is composed actually of kind of two nerves wrapped in a sheath. And you can kind of see that here. Um, and if I just rotate anteriorly to the origin of the sciatic nerve and kind of zoom in here, you can see this is the sciatic nerve. You can see that the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve join to form the sciatic nerve. So I'm just going to come back around posteriorly here and I'm going to remove the sciatic nerve. And I guess um, really quickly the pudendal nerve also travels to the greater sciatic foramen inferior to piriformes and enters the lesser sciatic foramen to go into the ischial rectal fossa. Um, I guess I can show that to you really quickly. So just kind of coming down here. We did a whole lab on this and it wasn't repro but it is some pretty interesting anatomy. So here is the pudendal nerve. Here is the greater sciatic foramen through which piriformes comes and I have removed. So inferior to that comes the pudendal nerve and then it re-enters the lesser sciatic foramen. Um, it's not as well defined on the left side of this model because I've removed the sacrospinous ligament which is one of the boundaries of it. But kind of, sorry it's just lagging a bit, rotating back here. Pudendal nerve this is the ischiorectal fossa. This is the superficial transverse um, perennial membrane. And this is the levator ani muscles, which form the floor of the pelvis. And so, as I said, the pudendal nerve enters the ischiorectal fossa to do all the things that it does, splaying the rectum and um, part of the scrotum and stuff like that. Anyways, just coming back to gluteal anatomy, um, I'm just going to re, re remove these nerves. The last thing I want to talk about is the lateral rotators of the thigh. So a bunch of these small muscles that you see here. So starting from superior to inferior, we have the lateral rotators of the thigh and extensors of the hip. So piriformis is one of those, inserting on the greater trochanter. And then we have the superior gemellus. And then below that we have the obturator tendon, which attaches, attaches to the obturator internus muscle. So Superior to that is the superior gemellus. Inferior to this is the inferior gemellus. And then the obturator internus originates from what would be the obturator fossa. So if I just rotate anteriorly, we have the obturator membrane covering the obturator fossa. And on the inside of that, there's the obturator internus, which then exits via the lesser sciatic foramen. And I guess just a kind of cool clinical note is we then have the obturator membrane and below that above that we kind of have a hole here through which the obturator artery comes and the obturator nerve comes the um, nerve that innervates the medial compartment of the thigh so just rotating back posteriorly and kind of bringing this more into view um, just to reiterate piriformes superior gemellus obturator internus inferior gemellus and then finally the last thing i haven't touched on is the quadratus femoris and I guess the only thing that I'd like to say about the quadratus femoris is that it only laterally rotates the thigh. It does not extend the hip. So these other four muscles that I've talked about, they all laterally rotate the thigh and extend the hip. Quadratus femoris doesn't extend the hip. It just laterally rotates the thigh. All right, so that's kind of the last thing I want to talk about with the gluteal region anatomy. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about in my next video is the posterior anatomy of the thigh or the posterior compartment as well as um, the popliteal fossa anatomy. Okay, awesome. Cheers.